Hi, welcome everyone to Wellness Wednesdays with me, Yehudis Shamroth. I've been a nurse anesthetist for over 30 years in the United States, and I currently am a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture, herbology, and health coaching in my later career years. Um, I gave up anesthesia over two years ago, and I live in the land of Israel now, the Holy Land. It's a beautiful place where I reinvented myself and combined my skills as a healthcare practitioner in the Western setting with the traditional Chinese medicine model. And my integrative care is uh, known in the Jerusalem and Beit Shemesh areas uh, as being someone you could, I've known as someone you can come to and be very uh, rest assured that I will look at everything uh, to find the root cause of your problem from both the Western and the Eastern perspectives. Uh, this integrative medicine model is something I spoke about at great length last week. I'm going to talk about it a little, lot more probably in the future. But if you need, if you have any kind of chronic pain conditions or allergies or even emotional issues, pain, anything to do with uh, anything, issues like diabetes, hypertension, I can help with all those things because we never eliminate one model over the other. We combine them together very successfully. And as I love to say, if you know enough about Western medicine and you know enough about Eastern medicine, they, there are no contradictions at all. So feel free to watch this every Wednesday live on YouTube and on Facebook where you can also access all the previous Wellness Wednesday webinars. Uh, give it a thumbs up and click on the bell like everybody asks to do. I hate to do that, but I think we need to do that so we can see what people, see how many people are watching so I can gain more um, information so I know what you want me to speak about. And please leave messages and write to me and tell me what health-related uh, topics you'd like to hear about with the health, nutrition, wellness, uh, because I like to interview a wide array of people, not just the health coaches and the, the personal trainers out there and the nutritionists, which we want to hear from over and over. But we also want to hear from people like our guest today, Andy Sadowitz, who is going to talk to us about mindset transformation. So how do we get into a healthy mindset? It's very good and well to learn the list of foods we should eat and we shouldn't eat and see what time we should go to bed and see how much water to drink and see when we should visit the doctor versus when we should visit the uh, chiropractor, all these things. But, you know, you have to get yourself in the right mindset for it. And uh, it's so difficult for us. I'm not sure why. But for me in particular, I'm going to be looking much forward to hearing what Andy has to say about how we can make that shift in our minds to be healthier people. I would like to share my screen. And again, as what I usually do is I go to, uh, and I had to before I bring my guest on, in other words, I will talk a little bit about my usual COVID updates. I'd like to bring an update every single week from a little bit of a different perspective. I always talk about the supplements that are recommended and the, the usual routine recommendations, but I think just sometimes hearing a little bit more about why we're doing these things it makes, it makes an impact. And again, for someone like me too, Maybe it is because I'm older. I like to hear it over and over, and then I it really sinks in. So, so that's Andy, and she will she'll, we'll be bringing her on shortly. Okay, let's. Me, you know, I forgot to put my. Oh dear, I need to put this in a different format. Okay. Oh, what's that? Let's try this. Okay. So we do. I don't want, do you want subtitles? I don't know if you want subtitles. Okay. We have a couple of slideshows here and I've lost myself. Let's do this one more time. Show taskbar. I'm sorry. I usually have this all set up. <laughs> here we go. Okay. So, so we want to reduce our risk. We want to boost our immune defense and repair abilities, and we want to stay resilient. We've talked about this week after week. These are the recommended supplements for prevention and treatment of coronavirus. And by the way, it can affect us, these, taking good care of our health and increasing our healthier habits can allow these nutrients to work better if we have a good digestive system and it will fight every infection every year, even if we don't have corona anymore. Wouldn't that be great if we didn't? But any virus and any cold out there, it's just good to follow these guidelines so we can uh, enhance our immune systems and we can be in much better shape to fight off anything that comes our way, any viruses at all whether it's bacterial, viral, parasite, or pathogen, anything. So there is much in nature that has to offer us in risk, reducing risks and avoiding infections too. Uh, but we know the exposure is widespread and illness is an option, but we don't want that option. Uh, so for each symptomatic, in, symptomatic individual, there are many people whose immune defense and repair systems 
recognize the virus and they neutralize it right away. But many of them are, uh, have uh, pre-existing conditions. We've been hearing about this a lot. Anybody who has hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, obesity especially, and older age, uh, these kind of people, lung diseases, these are people who are set up for a much uh, worse uh, go around if they become infected by the, by the virus. And we, they become an inhospitable host, especially if they're hospitalized. So we want to do whatever we can to keep ourselves healthy. We have our most, most um, helpful for supporting our immune function. Again, over and over, we say vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, quercetin, melatonin and probiotics, okay? We all, you know, and every week I like to say a little bit different uh, information about, we know vitamin D is good for bone health and repairing cells. It's also called a neurohormone and it means it regulates the cell division and is important in many systems designed to renew the body, not just the bones, especially when it's combined, combined with vitamin K2. You can put the drops under your tongue to provide easy and predictable uptake. Uh, and it goes to the brain right away where it's most helpful and it helps repair the cells. Uh, we know vitamin C is also very good for colds and, and re cell repair. We always make sure when people have surgery or post-surgical patients are always on good vitamin C amounts. You see, I, I don't have to read this every week, but you can see on the screen all the recommended dosages and you step it up or, or you take it down, whatever your case may be. If you have corona, you might want to take double of these things, but you please check with your doctor or your healthcare practitioner to see what is right for you. Or you can write to me and I can help you make that decision. Uh, zinc and magnesium prevent harm and activate cell functions from taste and smell to immune and neurohormone balance. So zinc and magnesium work together and people are very, very often deficient in this. Uh, label the videos on YouTube. Okay, we'll do this. I'm gonna look at that uh, message in a minute as soon as I'm done reading this. Uh, we do know that um, people who are deficient in zinc and magnesium are, uh, are more at risk for a bad illness with corona and other things like metabolic acidosis because these zinc and magnesium neutralize a lot of acid in the body. Um, diabetics are at risk. We have to make sure we keep our body healthy. Whatever it is, you may not be able to, to get rid of your diabetes or your hypertension, but you can lose weight. You can get better sleep. You can take better care of yourself. And, and just to that, along those lines, I will come over to my slideshow and get rid of myself here. Great. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here it is. We have our usual tips for protecting ourselves and others. We want to wear a mask. We want to wash our hands. We want to eat a nutrients dense diet, nutrient dense diet. We want to optimize your vitamin D as we talked about. We want to eat foods containing what we call phytonutrients or plant nutrients. Like quercetin we talked about before is a natural plant uh, based uh, vitamin that does, uh, does so much to uh, help antioxidants the antioxidant effect of your body. And I was reading last night, the way to describe oxidation in your body is like kind of a rusting that happens. And we want to remove that ability for the body to just rust itself up by getting rid of the antioxidant, by giving antioxidants so your body doesn't oxidize as much. And it slows processes down, all the healthy processes down. We want to recommend for immune support to eat and drink properly. You want to eat healthier. You want to eat your you know, vegetables and your fruits and high beautiful colored uh, fruits and vegetables that give you all the nutrients. Uh, we want to eat real foods and whole foods. We want to stay well hydrated. Drink plenty of water and herbal bev beverages. At least a gallon a day. Can you do that? I don't know. I try to. You want to do some relaxation techniques. Can't get rid of stress completely. Obviously, nobody can get rid of stress. It's almost like a joke to say, just get rid of your stress. <laughs> but, you know, we really have to work on it. That's part of the whole mindfulness situation right now. We're trying to work on all the issues in our in our um our lives that are creating ill health, not just the coronavirus, but we want to take this time to take stock of how we do treat ourselves to begin with and get ourselves in a, in a healthier situation. So whatever comes our way, we can handle it very well. Uh, hygiene, of course, frequent hand washing and social distancing, stretching very often and doing whatever exercise you can do is a big, big boost to your immune system. So on that note, I just wanted to say a little bit about the mindset. We know we want a healthy body and mind. We want to drink water. We want to eat natural foods. We want to think positively. We want to exercise every day. We want to sleep well. But as I mentioned in the beginning, it's so hard for some of us to take that leap over to that healthy lifestyle. Um, I'm a very, I've always raised my family in a very healthy way. I'm a nurse. 
we have a very clean, we wash our hands, we took a lot of vitamins, we got good sleep, you know, we get very good health habits in my family. And I'm proud to say that my children are much healthier than me now. They're in their 20s. And then when they see me take a glass of wine or a bag of potato chips, which I do sometimes because I love them, they say, Mom, why are you doing that? Just, just get rid of it. Just don't do that anymore. And I'm so grateful to them for, for, for reminding me of my good health habits that I want to stick to. But also, I'm really grateful that they have it on their own. And they'll probably teach their children right from the very beginning to be much healthier. But how do we do this? It's, it, it requires a change in men, my, a mindset. And, and I was thinking about the whole mindset situation. What does it mean for our mindset anyway? So I was doing a little research. We're going to hear all about it from Andy. But the definition of mindset that I found was... A mindset is quite literally a setting of the mind. It's putting on a lens or a frame of mind which orients an individual to a particular set of assumptions and expectations. So you have to you have to put it into practice with your own mind. You have to make an effort at it. It doesn't come to you naturally. Some people it might, and Andy can address those issues. But I came across a study uh, of uh, people who were post surgery in the hospital, and they were given pain medications. They were in a lot of pain after the surgery. Or given more morphine or something, and and they were doing a study to see who was perceiving if they were getting better um, pain relief. So it, you know, we're testing the mindset basically of the patient. So half the patients received their pain medication regularly by a doctor or a nurse standing by their side, and they said, "We're giving your pain medication now. Thank you very much." The other patients had no one standing by their side. They were given the medication, same amount of medication, same dosage, same times. Um, but by automatically by pump, by, by IV pump. And when they did results, when they did a survey at the end of the study, the people who had the doctor and the nurse standing there with them said they had great pain relief and everything was satisfactory. And the people who didn't see anybody standing by their side uh, said they got no pain relief or was very uncomfortable and they felt terrible the whole time. So that was a mindset situation where in their minds, because there was no one standing there, they felt like they weren't getting any pain relief. And another study was on housekeepers just a test mindset again. So these housekeepers who were uh, working in all different hotels all over the country of America, um, they worked very, very hard, eight hours a day, very labor intensive work, as you know how it is to make beds and vacuum and how much how much work goes into to uh, taking care of hotel rooms. So there was, was again, a wondering if they were going to perceive different uh, results in, in their job satisfaction if they were told different things. So they split the groups in half and one half was given videos about how how wonderful it is you have this job because it, it 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 makes you so energetic and it builds your muscles and you're burning calories by this many many calories by vacuuming and this many calories by washing the bathtubs and the toilets and walking up and down the stairs and it, it, it produces happy endorphins so you you are more satisfied with your job and um, by the way I forgot to mention that these about 99% of these people who they interviewed said they don't get much exercise and they didn't even realize that their job is exercise, but that be that as it may, they split the groups in two and the one group was given positive um, video saying what a wonderful thing is that you have this kind of job because you're exercising as you work. You don't even have to go home and exercise and you're happier and you're more fulfilled and, uh, and look at how your body is in such great shape. The other group was given videos saying your job is so hard. It's causing this much stress in your life. You have to go home and, and you're exhausted and you can't even manage to do things when you get home. You can't even manage to take a walk and exercise if you wanted to. Uh, your job is so stressful. Uh, you really need to find a way to, to de-stress after having such a situation where you're vacuuming all day long, where you're up and down steps and you're making beds. So it was no surprise to find out at the end of this study who had the better job satisfaction were the people who were given the positive videos about how wonderful their job was and making them physically fit. And of course, the other group of people, it was terrible. They went away very saddened by the fact that they had uh, they poor, poor uh, outcomes from their jobs and they had no time to exercise and they were feeling very emotionally, physically, and spiritually terrible about themselves. So without further ado, we want to talk to our special guest, Andy. We know it's all about mindset and she's going to tell us why. Okay, that was last week. <laughs> Let's bring Andy on. Oopsie. Let's get Andy on. Add the stream and stop sharing. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Hi, good morning. How are you? Uh, this is Andy, and I'm going to give you a bio. I think I was going through the paper so fast that I was by it, so I didn't have to. Okay, let me say a little bit about Andy. Okay, Andy Sadowitz is a passionate better maker. 
She maximizes human potential. She is a global personal development strategist, transformation coach for mastering change and author of Rise and Shine Personal Development Journal. Uh, Andy brings her wealth of knowledge, expertise, and extensive training in EQ, positive psychology, and high performance in mindset, together with her unwavering passion for personal development leadership in her coaching. So she is a certified professional coach, a global Lumina practitioner, and master NLP practitioner. It was a very high level uh, uh, degree in honor, by the way. It takes a very long time. She had an honors degree in organizational psychology, a master's degree in organizational communication, research and practice. And Andy works with individuals, leaders, and teams in a wide range of business and organizations in the fields of finance, real estate, high tech, and social and educational frameworks. I hope she's gonna work with us with the healthcare issue. We'll, we'll introduce her to the healthcare people and I'm sure she already has clients like that. Um, Andy is blessed with, uh, to be a mom of three children and her, and her spare time loves reading, working out, running. Uh, and she loves wonderful, uh, wonderful health habits I see. So she's gonna be a natural for this. Uh, she's a member of the ICF and EMCC, which she'll tell us. And uh, Andy, without further ado, uh, thank, you, thank you for letting me uh, do my little spiel on the COVID updates. <laughs> patiently. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for those beautiful insights and those very, very helpful tips that you shared with all of us. Well, listen, I really, I'm the person, I think I'm actually going to hire you personally later because, <laughs> because I'm one of those people that I'm so motivated to do for other people all the time. And I'm an energetic. Mm. I just turned 63 a couple of days ago. I'm very energetic. I feel like I'm you know? but my body is not lying to me and I need to make some really big changes and I just can't get that mind shift going. So, so if you right. could tell us that what, first of all, tell us what changing our mindset does to help our well being. Okay. So um, I'd love to just reflect for a moment on the case studies that you shared with everybody at the, um, just before you, you introduced me. And three things that jumped out for me in those two examples are um, really, really relevant to understanding mindset and how to grow and cultivate and master your mindset. The first idea that really jumped out for me is this concept that only recently, in the last decade primarily, did we really understand this incredible concept of neuroplasticity, which basically means that our brain can change. We can train our brains and our brains can change. And that means that whereas long ago we may have believed that the way we are wired is the way we are going to stay, we know that that is no longer the case. And our brains are malleable and like you said so accurately, with awareness and intention, you can really make incredible changes in your brain, in your thinking, and upgrade those limiting beliefs and sabotaging unhelpful thinking patterns that really hold you back and keep you stuck. So that was the first piece of great news that our brains can change and it's a skill that we can all learn and master. The second thing that jumped out for me in those two case studies was this concept that the subconscious mind can never differentiate between reality and imagination. Mm -hmm. And this is such a powerful tool that all of us can leverage because what that ultimately means in our day-to-day -day functioning is that if I believe something, and I see it in my mind, and I start to create this mental rehearsal and familiarity of going over and over and over again in my mind, the vision or the goal or the desired outcome that I want to create, my brain for all intents and purposes believes that to already be true, which means we have this powerful mechanism inside our minds that is creative. And if we can learn how to play with that and really leverage that as well, we can almost reverse engineer the results that we want in our life by starting with a clear vision in mind first. With a well-formed outcome, you can already start to create certain pathways in your mind of what I ultimately want to accomplish and achieve and then work backwards from that end point. So that's one of the um, one of the uh, concepts of visual visual visualization. Yes. 
And we're going to talk about that in one of the mindsets. Yeah. yeah. And the third thing that just jumped out for me in those two beautiful case studies you shared was this concept of the power we have to change our perception. You know, there is no such thing as objective reality, according to mindset. We are all seeing the world through our own filters and our own lenses and our own experiences. And that's why two people can look at an identical situation and per perceive it quite differently. And so our superpower as human beings is our ability to change our perception. And so much of the time we're trying to change behavior and we're trying to change emotion, but our real power lies in first and foremost changing our perception. So those three things, knowing that your brain is malleable and you can retrain and rewire your brain is incredible. Knowing that your subconscious mind has the ability to create reality because it cannot differentiate between your vision and reality to begin with. And then knowing that you have the power to shift perception. And when you change your perception, your emotional experience changes and your behavior changes as well. Those three things are critical, almost fundamental aspects of learning how to master your mindset. Okay, so can you give us some examples of how, let's say in any, in any realm or in the healthcare realm, if you want, um, how somebody could go about making the shift. Someone like me, for instance, Beautiful. I really I know, yeah. I know over here, logically, what I need to do. I teach it every week <laughs> and I do, I do a lot of it. I do mm -hmm. a lot of it. I told you my family's following it, but there's yeah. still part of me and it might be a psychological thing. I think too, that sometimes gets in the way, but you're saying, you know, like, let's say like, uh, I don't want to take care of myself because of some deep seated, whatever insecurity, let's just say, I'm not saying that's the case, but it could be something. So, so even yeah. though, despite that, you're saying even despite something that might have formed this opinion in yourself, we can take the bull by the horns, basically, and we can change that. And then when we change that feeling about what we deserve, let's say, then we can, the, the, the behavior will follow? Well, in a nutshell, yes, but let's backtrack into how the technique works. Okay. So we actually have three separate mindsets. And... I love to really emphasize the difference between these three mindsets when it comes to making effective, meaningful, and sustainable change in our life. And these three mindsets are as follows. The first mindset is the mindset of a dreamer. And a dreamer's mindset is a mindset of possibility. It is big picture thinking, it is highly creative, it is the mindset that you need to visualize your life the way you would love it to be. Okay. So it is a mindset of possibility where you can almost transport yourself into the future and imagine your life the way you would love it to be. So if we had to take the health example, what would that dream look like if you were at your best? If you were your strongest and your healthiest and your fittest, what would that look like? How would an ideal day look? What would you be doing? How would your time management look? What would be possible for you and your life in that positive, inspiring vision? Mm -hmm. And with a dreamer's mindset, we jump forward into the future where anything is possible and we have this incredible broad big picture of how life could be that's a dreamer's mindset it is big it is inspiring it is positive it is engaging it's high energy and you really get to almost see the ideal and envision that and dream about that and connect with that high energy the second mindset is the realist mindset, and that is the logical, practical mindset of the how-to. So once you have formulated a clear outcome and you've got this gorgeous, positive, inspiring dream that is motivating you, you then have to activate the realist mindset, which is your execution. What is my strategy? What are the steps that I need to take in order to turn that vision into a reality? 
Great. What are the tasks that I need to do? What are the action items I need to follow through on? What resources do I need? What knowledge do I need to acquire? What help do I need to recruit? What support do I need? It's highly practical. It's task orientated. It's evidence based. It's down to earth. The third mindset is the critical mindset. And that's what you also mentioned right now in your story of what is a critical mindset? The critical mindset can either be what makes or breaks the entire process because the critical mindset can either be us becoming more and more aware of our excuses, our fears, our doubts, expectations, limiting beliefs, negative sabotaging thoughts, what is potentially holding us back, keeping us stuck and constantly derailing us. Mm -hmm. The power lies in learning what to do with a critical mindset, how to embrace it, how to listen to it, and then learning how to reframe and upgrade all those cognitive distortions so that they don't hold you back and keep you stuck. And you can really switch that mindset around, develop a growth mindset, and take meaningful practical action towards your vision. But we need all three. And mindset mastery is your ability to say, what is my ultimate vision? What do I want to accomplish for my life? What would an incredible health upgrade look like and feel like for myself? Get clear on that where anything is possible. Then become the realist in terms of what would I need to do? What daily disciplines do I want to integrate into my life? Where do I need health, support, knowledge and skills? All the resources that I would need to achieve that vision. Mm -hmm. And then dedicate enough time to the critical mindset where you really get to acknowledge what is holding me back, what is keeping me stuck, what are some of those excuses, fears, doubts, or limiting beliefs that I am holding onto and they are governing my behavior, but at the same time, they're not propelling me forwards. Learning how to reframe those is critical. Yeah. Right, and that can be very harmful as well. I mean, let's say something as simple as going to bed very late at night, like I yeah. mentioned before, you know, I didn't say this earlier, but in many of the previous sessions, we talked that sleep is so restorative and so reparative. And what we need to do to go out into the world these days, especially in Corona days, is to go out as healthy as possible. It's a very simple yeah. concept. Sleep will yeah. do that for you. I can't get myself to go to sleep early enough. Every, oh, it's already one o'clock. I better go to sleep almost every night. So, like, you know, it's not, a, but it's not, it's a very detrimental, not so obvious, you know, to the other people, but, you know, to a person who's trying to make the changes. Yeah. Every day, I'm aware of it every day. Oh, I did it again yeah. last night. Again last night. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so then, so then how do you fight those? Uh, I think the third part is my challenging part, but other people, what do you see yeah. is the, when you, when you see, well, you work with groups, tell us how you work with groups and why you work with companies. Yeah, I work market. with companies. I work with teams. I work with leaders and I work with individuals, anybody who wants to make positive transformation in their life. And, you know, something that is, you, you know, just resonating for me and hearing, uh, you know, the, the this repetition of habits that aren't serving us. Right. Often the fuel that we need, in addition to that positive, inspiring vision of how life could be, is looking also at the wider impact of that change on our life. So sometimes we tend to get too granular and we tend to zoom in, for example, if it's a health goal or we want to uh, change our eating habits or lose weight or put in a fitness goal, we kind of zoom in on that marathon that we want to run or that diet that we want to stick to. But we forget to also zoom out and look at the wider systemic impact of that change on our lives. And right. what else would be positively influenced as a result of that success? And sometimes looking at that wider impact, knowing how life will really be better and different and what other aspects of our life are going to be touched by the shift is really helpful. And the second thing is learning how to embrace and connect with our core values. No granular change is going to motivate us over time. We are people that even with a 
clear diet or a clear running plan unless we are connected to why we are doing what we are doing. What is the real driving force behind that? What are those core values that are motivating our change? That is critical for our success. Mm -hmm. And as long as we can connect to higher purpose, why am I doing this? Why is this so important to me? Then when those daily disciplines and those behavioral shifts get hard, I can really connect to those values and recruit them and bring them in to remind me why this really matters and why I care about this change. And your values are often your most reliable and powerful fuel for motivation, especially when it's hard, especially when you're not in the mood, and especially when you need perseverance and consistency, because change is not a magic switch. Change is a process of investment, patience, and dedication, and that may take time. So learning how to connect to your values as guiding lights, in addition to those three mindsets of having a clear outcome and a positive, inspiring vision, a clear action plan and strategy, because we know clarity is critical to success, mm -hmm. and then obviously learning how to master your mindset and reframe those negative thoughts and those unhelpful beliefs that kind of become our inner narrative. And for as long as we listen to that voice, it certainly dictates our performance. Right. Have you, um, I want to hear some examples if you have time to tell us what, what your success is. I'm sure you have very many. And then another question, if, if this is relevant at all, but where would something like uh, hypnosis fall into this? I mean, to fight the parts of you that are resistant. <laughs> so it's so interesting that you say that, you know, in NLP, um, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with NLP, it stands for Neuro Linguistic. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And a lot of NLP works with the subconscious mind. Um, we actually do bring in a lot of meditation, a lot of guided imagery, mm -hmm. a lot of also working with a timeline in terms of connecting to what we like to call your future self, which mm -hmm. is you working out who do I ultimately want to become? Who is that future self? What is her lifestyle all about? How is she healthier? How is she filled with vitality? How does she have a sense of energy? What is her mood like? How is she calm? How does she juggle a full schedule and so many multiple responsibilities simultaneously? How does she design and create a life that lets her do more of what she loves and also honor what we call that white space, those free um, blocks, those empty spaces in your calendar so that you can relax and recharge and rejuvenate. How do you, how do you plan your day so that you have time for sport, time for meditation, time for your children, time for fun, and then time for work? And, um, you know, using these kinds of techniques to imagine and see yourself living the kind of life that you want to live, that is a very, very important process of change. We have to first see that in our minds before we can ultimately create that in our lives. And it's hard for a lot of people, often when I'm working with different clients, their initial reaction is to jump into the realist mindset. Okay, mm -hmm. Andy, this is fantastic. I'm ready to have coaching. Let's dive into the frameworks. Let's build an action plan. And I'm like, mm -mm, slow down. We first have to activate the realist mindset. We first have to connect to what do you ultimately want to achieve? What is that goalpost? Take me there. Let's get transported into the future so we can connect to how you would love your life to be and how you would love to feel. And that's very hard for a lot of people. Some people are naturally more big picture thinkers and they are visionary, but a lot of people are more down to earth, practical, detail orientated, evidence based. And it's hard. We have to learn how to work with that muscle and develop that muscle and strengthen it so that we give permission and respect to the dreamer and the realist and then of course the critic and most of my work you is um is with a critic mindset helping my clients kind of work out um what is the cognitive distortion what is that limiting belief and 
destabilizing that limiting belief, proving to ourselves that some of those thoughts aren't necessarily true or they're not necessarily accurate or they are extreme. I've generalized in some way. I've activated what we call all or nothing thinking. So it's all this or that, but life isn't so black and white. Life is very gray. And how do I bring that gray space into my decision making? And a lot of the work revolves a lot around self-compassion and self-kindness and empathy because we're quite mean to ourselves. We're very harsh, very critical when we don't make change quick enough or fast enough or, or efficiently enough. We give up. We, we expect a lot of ourselves and learning how to track your progress and celebrate your wins and become your own personal inner cheerleader is so important. You know, how we speak to ourselves matters and we're listening to ourselves all day long. All day long. This is so incredible because I think it's what people really need to go to see if they can't do it on their own. That whole concept of neuroplasticity is something that I've been learning about for the past couple of years and how important yeah. it is to, to realize that you can retrain your brain, number one, and also to focus, to, to, to give respect to each different aspect of yourself, which I think is really important. And some people would have to go to someone like you to uh, really work that out because it's not necessarily uh, intuitive for a lot of people. But would you yeah. want to get of examples of what uh, your successes you probably have so many but just sure sure so i guess just to make it so relevant in terms of even the pandemic okay. you know um some some real examples with clients who are learning how to set healthier boundaries you know we joke that are you are you working from home or are you living at work because <laughs> that boundary has become so blurred in the past oh, year yeah. yeah and really learning how to self coach in terms of what is that limiting belief that is holding me back in terms of should I be working right now? Should I be with my children right now? What are those healthy boundaries? How do I set them for myself? How do I communicate that with my team so that that is respected, both to my direct reports, you know, where it comes from, my subordinates, my senior management, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. So I've done a fortune of work this year around productivity, um, efficient time management, healthy boundary setting, especially mm -hmm. with working remotely in a world that has gone completely digital overnight. That's been a real, real focal point for me and my clients. And the work around getting the limiting beliefs around what keeps me stuck and holds me back around that has been quite remarkable. Um, I've been working a lot recently with entrepreneurs as well who are launching their business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work around the limiting beliefs of putting myself out there, social media, what does that mean for my reputation and my image and my confidence? Mm -hmm. And just the limiting beliefs around marketing, sales, promotion. Is it arrogant? Is it sleazy? Is it <laughs> too much in your face? How do we do it in a way that honors our values and our integrity and we stay real and authentic? So a lot of work around those beliefs. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, just in general, the belief around confidence and self-worth. What are we measuring success by today? And with a pandemic especially, our old definitions of success may no longer be relevant. So mm -hmm. if my old definition of success was how um, present I could be with my family, maybe mm -hmm. that's a little bit different today because everyone's on top of each other. Everybody's learning from We're home. <laughs> yeah, it's been such a real challenge. Or um, how many hours of work I could manage before and during or post pandemic, those definitions of success have to be revisited. And a lot of the work with mindset mastery is around looking at our old assumptions and checking if they are current, checking if they apply today. And if they no longer apply, how can we challenge those assumptions, unlearn them, and then reprogram new helpful assumptions in their place? That's been a lot of my work today with individuals well, and with teams. 
Well, someone like you is so, so valuable to the world right now. I can't believe I've gone so long without meeting you and <laughs> you know, about what you do. I'd like you to tell everybody how you can, how they can reach you. I'm going to put uh, right now your, let's see if I can find you. Yeah. I'm going to, along the bottom scroll line, you'll see that Andy's website and her email. I'm sure you don't mind that putting me up there, right? So tell us, uh, as an individual, let's say a lot of individuals are watching, what can an individual do to come to you? And how would you set up, if we want to talk about money at all, just session wise, what's realistic to expect? Sure. So a general coaching process is around three months. Again, mm -hmm. I have clients who are with me for years we are working on different goals all the time okay. um, and I have clients who come for a brief process they have the tools they have the frameworks and off they go so it's yeah. highly yeah. individualized and our custom of course the process you know depending on the client and coaching the client really dictates the, the coaching flow um, I work with incredible tools when it comes to portraits and understanding your leadership style, understanding your personality. So there's a whole range to my business that involves um, assessments and portrait work and incredible portfolios for individuals and for teams, both in personal and professional development. Mm -hmm. And then there's the team coaching, which is working with organizations and companies and businesses to grow their teams. Um, as an individual, you can reach me on my website, on my email. I've got a daily positive recharge WhatsApp group, which you are all welcome to join. Um, it is a one message a day to your mobile phone, something positive to think about through the day, a message, an idea, an insight, always positive, always inspiring, something that can just give you that positive recharge to, to start your day. Wow. Well, I already feel very positively recharged after speaking with you. You're a very upbeat and Thank wonderfully you. delightful person to speak to. And I can see your clients must be very successful. And I was ho I'm hoping that you're teaching other people how to, to do what you do because you're only one person and we can't, you can't spread yourself to the rest of the world. And really need you. Are you teaching courses? Are you teaching programs on how to people? I'm to actually creating an online course at the moment. It's in process and uh, I hope to launch it very, very soon. Oh, good luck with that. I really wish you all thank the best. Thank you. It's been wonderful to meet you. And thank, thank you for you. taking the time out of your work day, your day with your family and get your preparations for Passover and all that, everything that goes along with it. Where do you live by the way, Andy? Thank you. I'm based in Ranana in Banana. Israel and my clients are all over the world. Okay. Well, so nice to meet you. And thank you very you much for taking too. the time to join us and have a wonderful you. day and your week and a great holiday. Okay. Thanks thank for joining us. Thank you so us. much. And just Anybody be else? well and, uh, and be healthy. And thank you for the amazing health tips that you share with us so generously. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. All the best, everybody. Thanks for joining us to Wellness Wednesday. I'll see you next week. <laughs> uh, Andy.